In Ezekiel 1, the first thing that has stuck out to me is he is describing this vision that God is giving him. And, you know, he is sitting by the river Chabar among the exiles. The heavens were open to him and he saw visions of God. And then God, you know, he sees these angels, creatures that, and describes them in flashes of lightning and, you know, all these things. So I, I have not experienced that type of vision yet where God has opened up the heavens to me in that way. However, the thing that I wanted to point out is that it is possible for us to still experience those things today. And that even in the New Testament, God says in the last days, Young men will see visions, old men will dream dreams. And um, I think oftentimes we tend to think that the experiences that people had in the Bible were just for them and just for that time and that we don't have access to that. And God's not doing that same thing now. And so what I want to point out is, is that is not correct. And the things that are recorded in the Bible are really people's experiences with God. And he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And whatever they experienced is accessible for us to experience. And um, so some of the things that I've experienced in terms of visions, um, so oftentimes when I'm hanging out with God, I like to picture Jesus with me. So I'll picture him sitting in a chair or if I'm driving, I'll picture him in the passenger seat and, and I'll talk to him freely as you know, um, cause God is with us all the time. And, and what is really cool. I love it when, when God takes the scene over and, um, and we have those interactions. For example, I've, I've done a couple of videos on this, but I'll, just mention it again because it's so cool. So we can initiate connecting with God in these ways also by using our imaginations, by asking him specific questions. And God wants to connect with us and he wants us to ask him things. He wants, like it, you know, in the scriptures it it says, um, ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find. Um, knock and the door will be open to you. Like he wants us to press in. He wants us to ask. He wants us uh, to seek and find and all these things. And something else before I go into my own stories is um, really, I believe that the Bible is meant to be a launching pad for us to have our own relationship with God. I mean, there's a lot of stories in here of of different people's relationships with him. So we can see who God is like through those stories. We can see his character and his nature and the interactions and, and all that. And there's tons of wisdom in here too. And really it's, I believe it's meant to be a launching pad for us to have our own experiences with him, for us to, to learn who he is and connect with him in those ways and, and have our, yeah, just have our own experiences. So, um, some of the things that I've done videos on before, but I'll just mention it again, uh, cause they're probably lost in the mix, um, where I've had visions of him and it's been, uh, very impactful for me. And they've started out with, not all of them have started out with me initiating it, but most of them have. And, and what I mean by me initiating it is me using my imagination to, uh, to picture Jesus somewhere. And sometimes I'll ask him like, Jesus, where are you in the room? And then I'll see him someplace. And, and so I'm just believing that he could actually be there. And so one time when I was in a worship setting, I did that and I asked him, you know, Jesus, where are you in the room? And he appeared directly in front of me and we were looking at each other for a while. And then he reached out his hand into my chest and started massaging my heart. And I could tangibly feel it, like physically feel my heart being massaged. It was awesome. And um, and then another time that started as a vision, 
and I got to tangibly experience him was I was sitting on my bed um, and I'll, I'll make the story shorter than it was. You can find the video if you want the longer story. But my shoulder started hurting and I was picturing Jesus sitting on the bed right next to me. And so I just asked him, I was like, Jesus, will you just touch my shoulder and make the pain go away? And instantly the pain left. And like, and so, um, yeah, so I pictured him sitting next to me, pictured him touching my shoulder and then the pain left. And, um, so yeah, I mean, those are just a couple examples, but, uh, and I know lots of people who have actually gotten to see visions of the heavens opening up and things like that. Um, I have asked God actually, okay. So even in worship, a lot of times I do picture God on the throne and picture the sea of glass and picture, you know, the things that the Bible talks about as being in the throne room and using my imagination in that way. I have yet to experience uh, the things that Ezekiel talks about, for example, but I know people who have and who see angels and um, regularly and have seen visions of heaven. And so I know it's possible and and I think it's important for us connecting with God to have these experiences and just knowing that it is possible and to ask for them and to press in and and seek them out and even initiate them by using our imagination and then you know letting God take the scene over and have it come to life. Um, so we can just, oh yeah, also something else that I like to do using my imagination is, uh, picture myself with Jesus and just like resting my head on his shoulder and being embraced by him. And, um, it, I like when I am doing that, really, I can feel my whole body just like relax and, yeah, so um, vision is great. God's given us our imagination. Let's use it to connect with him. And my, I guess my main point is that uh, the things that the prophets and all the forefathers and the apostles and all these people in the Bible that we admire, the things that they experienced are accessible to us. And God desires us to ask and seek and and get close to Him. And um, so there are things that we can do to initiate that even, um, like asking and using our imagination to start the vision. Um, yeah, and I think also, I mean, it does, it says the pure in heart will see God. And so I think even by getting closer to him through believing him enough to walk in his ways, believing that he's good, believing that what he says to do is actually good for us. So obeying him, Jesus says that if you love me, you'll obey my commands. I I don't think it's meant to be a striving to obey him to prove that we love him, but we can see how much we love him by how much we're obeying him. And if we're not obeying him, do we actually believe him? Do we actually love him? Um, and so it's just a, a symptom. It's, it's looking at the fruit to see how our heart is doing, how the root is doing. Um, and the more that we are walking in his ways, personally, I think the more that he can trust us with more authority and with more power and with more experiences of him and more visions and things like that. So so that's part of it too, is, is getting closer to him in terms of walking in his ways and repentance and abiding in him. And as we do those things, I believe that we will see more of who he is.